Good morning. So if you were here last week, um, I told a story. I told a story about two brothers and they had an argument, they couldn't get along and it got so bad that the older brother hired a carpenter to build a fence. Some of you might remember, but the carpenter didn't build a fence. Does anyone remember what she built? A bridge. She built a bridge. And the brothers were able to cross the bridge and reconcile. So I have another story about a bridge. It's actually, we're going to watch a video about a bridge today. But before, yes, we do have it. <laughs> if you were here in the first service, we didn't have the video. But before the video starts, I want to um, ask you a question. If you were going to build a bridge over the Route 1 bypass out here, the, the busy road out here, if you were going to build a bridge over that road, what materials would you use? What would you use to build that bridge? Steel. Steel, Steel makes a lot of sense. Rebar. Cement, rebar. These are all good. In the first service, they suggested hope. I think <laughs> hope is good for bridge construction. Um, I'm not an engineer, but that seems like a good idea. But nobody said grass. Nobody said grass. If you were going to build a bridge, would you use grass? I wouldn't. It doesn't seem like it would work. I don't know. But we have a video today um, of some communities building a special bridge. The Quechua Chaca Bridge in Peru is rebuilt every year using traditional Inca engineering techniques by the local communities on either side of the canyon. Can we turn up the volume this bridge bit? has been continually rebuilt in the same location since the time of the Incas. The entire bridge is built in only three days. To construct the bridge, grass called coyo is harvested and then prepared to be woven into large cables, beginning with small cord, which is twisted together from the local grass. These cords are then twisted to form a larger rope, and the ropes are then braided to create the main cable. Up on the highway, the community works together to pull these ropes to stretch them out. These ropes are woven and twisted. Each rope is made from 30 of the small cords, and then three of these ropes are braided to form the cables that will support the bridge. After more stretching, the cables are then carried down to where the bridge will be installed. The old bridge is used to run the first cable across for what will become the new bridge. And then the old bridge is cut down and it falls into the water and is washed away by the river. All day long, the community pulls on the new cables to prepare them for the bridge. These supporting cables are anchored to the stone abutments on either side of the canyon. Victoriano Arisapana is the architect of the bridge, and he uses traditional methods which have been handed down in his family for centuries. The structure of the bridge is made with four cables for the floor and two handrails. The bridge weaving begins in the morning with Victoriano weaving from one side and another worker weaving from the other side until they meet in the center of the bridge. When the bridge is finally finished, the communities come together to celebrate. The structure is remarkably safe. It has been built for centuries in this way and can hold dozens of people at any one time. to see the video. 
Um, I love the way that the communities come together, that they take the wisdom from, that they've handed down for centuries, and they bring that together to create something for their community every year. Thank you for listening and watching our story today. <laughs>